known each other quite a bit and talked about Apollo 7, but I don't think we've touched down on uh, your fighter pilot days. Of all the things in my life, and that's uh, almost 90 years now, being a Marine Corps fighter pilot was the most important thing in my life. I imagine you'd have to have a, a certain amount of, of grit and inner strength to do the task. When I joined the Navy out of high school, one month short of being 18 years old, and I went to boot camp down there in San Diego. They were gonna select captains, and I figured I was so smart that I'd be automatically be a platoon leader. The man that was in charge of our particular group, he says, you're too young and too small to be any platoon leader. Hmm. Wow. And he was right. Uh, I was just not very big or what have you on it. And it was my first introduction to reality of what the military service is. So I never was a platoon leader. We had the drill team, though, in our, our group down there. And I started finding myself encouraged by, by military accomplishment. Mm -hmm. We can relate on the height issue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, with your resume getting into the astronaut program, how was that feeling that day when you got the, the letter, the acceptance? Well, I felt good. I was a, a civilian. I thought I was the first civilian, but it turned out there was two of them in our group. If anything, I'd say the people in those days, we were all fighter pilots, real fighter pilots. And so any time that you were flying with any of them, you had to be aware that you might have to defend yourself against them, and, you know, things like that. I mean, yeah. it's. You were the backup on Apollo 1, uh, and the, that tragedy is, is just so sad. And uh... Well, that was our second assignment uh, on the, uh, the launches. And the second team, turns out, was our team, Wally Shaw, Don Isley, and I. And after training for about eight months, they canceled that flight. And so we were concerned for about two or three days, but they had moved us in as backup for what was still that first flight. So here we are training, and we were pretty good, Wally Sherrod, Don Isley, and I. And after about mm, four months, the prime crew, they died in an accident on the, on the pad. And it, oh, a week or 10 days later, then we inherited the first flight again. So that was the, the third assigned team, which we turned into the first launch. You proved that we could go to the moon. You were a part of that crew. We were the first manned Apollo mission. And to this day, 52 years later, it's still the longest, most ambitious, most successful first test flight of any new flying machine. It was a time of life when people were starting to expand our reach in society. There's now been, what, five or six hundred people that have gone out and done these things. But in those days, we were fighter pilots. Fighter pilots, rightly or wrongly, are sticking their neck out to move ahead of all those around us. So even though some good friends of ours had died while we were waiting for it, to get ready for it, we felt very satisfied that we were filling in when we were supposed to. We, we backed up, we were prime crew at one time, then back up and what have you. So, but we were also aware of the fact when you become the prime crew on our assignment, then you've got to do everything you can to make sure you get the, you get the mission completed. And we did. And frankly, I, I feel fortunate just to have been included in a, in a part of that development that I consider preferable. Really, it's wonderful. Uh, I cannot complain about anything but maybe my physical condition, but I cannot complain about having had the opportunity to have the right thought, the right thinking to expand our universe here on, on this planet.
I'm sure there were tons of tests prior to the, to the launch. Were you a part of any of those tests? Was the Fisher Space Pen a part of those? Before we flew, there was one time there when they wanted to, us to test and use the things, but you see, we weren't in zero G. And so that was what it was. No big deal for us, but when we got it and we were there, we thought, oh my God, we we're right. We can do anything we wanted to with it. That's, I'm so glad that our pen did not distract you from all the major tasks you had to complete in <laughs> four and a half million mile travel. Uh, <laughs> certainly true. It was, it was just one of those tools in the background. We, just, we took it with us. We used it for whatever we had to. Our grandfather did a good job for you then. <laughs> yes, he did. Going back to the launch, most, most of us can't even dream or imagine what it would be like to be in the Saturn V, 10, 9, 8, 7. What was going through your, your mind at that time? The world would like to think we were scared or afraid of what was coming up. And my personal impression of what was going on was that we've gotta be able to launch, we gotta be able to launch. We did nothing to go wrong. If it went wrong, we wanted it to be something we could go with anyway. When it got down to the last I think about two and a half or three minutes before the scheduled liftoff, the pressure in one of those tanks was not quite up there yet. So uh, we went into a, a delay and turned the heat on to get it up a little faster. It was not much of a deal to anybody else because it meant we were two and a half minutes late. holding our breath until we could get launched. We did not want to have anything come up that would stop us. And I'll never forget, we launched and then it was about 10, 10 minutes to get into, into orbit. But uh, after each minute, uh, one or the other of us on board had the re report to check in. And I can remember all of us in that spacecraft at that time, just kind of going, Whew, good. <laughs> we we wanted to get off, and we weren't thinking about the people watching yeah. and satisfying. And we were just thinking about ourselves getting mm -hmm. satisfied. I imagine so. Okay. Survival instincts yes. kicking yeah. in gear. Yeah. Abs yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you seem like you were a bit of an adrenaline junkie in your younger years. That's uh. <laughs> Well, I've had my pluses and minuses. <laughs> Some of the things that happened in my life I don't admit to until it's years and years later. <laughs> well, if, if now's the time, go for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> when you were up in orbit, were there any unexpected events that occurred where you had to be quick on your toes? During the mission, uh, there's no question there were some surprises Surprise. because we could not predict everything just perfectly before you, you would launch. And uh, Wally Shara was sick when we got airborne. And the Sunday before that, our entire crew, all three of us and some of the other people working with us, we had uh, gone hunting. So uh, ground control were upset about him not speaking up about having some baseline cold prior to launch. Yes, they were concerned about him not speaking up the way they wanted him to speak up. Yeah. He spoke up, he, he, he did everything that he was supposed to do. Uh, they did not like his attitude about doing it. On board, we were kind of with him yes. on it and uh, I felt, I felt sorry for him. These are the, the astropolitics that you talk about in your memoir. It's true. Yeah. I've flown with a lot of people in my life, and I think he was, he was as good as anybody I'd ever seen. And uh, I think I didn't speak out enough about that, maybe at the time. I can't remember. He was really good, believe me. Yeah. 
must yeah. have been comforting having a, yeah. a brother to uh, ensure your safety and, and trust. Oh trust yes, yeah. oh yes. In fact, there was one time there, he took a picture of me with the, uh, a nice new pen there. And I think the public in the last 50 years has th thought that I was taking it for that. Uh, and what was happening is I was using it and he was taking a picture and I, I smiled and got a picture of me using one of your yeah. new... <laughs> I, you <laughs> autographed one of those right. pictures for me right. that yeah. you gifted, so we well, thank I, you. Yeah, we both have so. one. It, that's because they, they took that picture. Wally, I think, had taken that picture and they took a look at it and, and it, it had nothing to do with their attitude about it until I pointed out. And I said, here, I'm using their pen. Yeah. <laughs> Our space pen, <laughs> love it. And, and like, like we had earlier said, I'm glad that the pen did not um, affect the flight in a negative way. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't well, encumber you. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I thought those pens worked pretty doggone good. Why, thank you, Thank sir. you so much. Thank you. My did, gr grandfather would be very proud to hear that. Did, did you ever tell our grandfather that? You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I <laughs> saw him afterward. I can't remember if I saw him afterward. But t tell him the pen worked good, and I'm, I'm glad I still have a pen, and you guys have given me a couple. We'll send him our thoughts. You you got it, Walt. <laughs> Walt, I actually br we actually brought you your own space pen. I'll pull it out here. This is the original astronaut space pen you used on Apollo 7, uh -huh. but in nickel, chrome, titanium, nitride. It's got my name on it. It's inscribed there with your name and also the uh, upcoming anniversary, <laughs> 53rd anniversary. Yeah. It's Apollo working. <laughs> this is much nicer looking than the uh, pen that we had. Mm -hmm. Would you like to test it out? There we go. Okay. <laughs> that beautiful titanium plating over it, just for you. We have not released this yet, Walt, so you're the very first one to own this particular model. Is it mine? It's yours. That is yours. It's got your name on we it. We wanted to that tell you, be. thank you. <laughs> yes, thank that, you. Thank you for everything. That's really good. <laughs> My space pen. If um, some of these uh, current designers physicists, engineers that are pushing to get people to another planet or back onto the moon, what piece of advice in a positive light do you think you would give them? I think it's important that they learn how other lives are dependent on what they do and they should be thinking about not just their own life.